Good morning, everyone. Welcome to morning prayer on Thursday, the, where are we? 19th, 19th of November, whizzing by. Um, this morning, uh, we commemorate Hilda, the abbess of Whitby. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about her um, in a minute. Um, but if you're going to join in um, with the readings at home this morning, uh, then you might like to look up Psalm 61 and Psalm 62. Uh, they're both set for this morning. Our Old Testament reading continues the book of Daniel, and we're in chapter 9, verse 20 to the end of that chapter. So 9, 20 to the end. And for our New Testament reading, which I will read later, it is a long one. Um, and we're continuing in Revelation um, and we're on chapter 12. So it's all of chapter 12 of Revelation. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so the canticle before our New Testament reading, and the canticle is for this season, the kingdom season. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people the people who I'm formed for myself, that they might declare my love and praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And so uh, I will read our New Testament reading uh, carrying on our book of Revelation and reading chapter 12. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared for her by God, so that she can be nourished for 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil, and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them night and day before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
for they did not cling to life, even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with a great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of the great eagle, so that she could fly from the serpent into the wilderness of her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time. Then from his mouth the serpent poured water like a river after the woman to sweep her away with the flood. But the earth came to help of came to the help of the woman. It opens its, ma- its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. And then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her children, those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. Then the dragon took his stand on the sand of the seashore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodness, are you enjoying Revelation? I mean, it is it is an amazing um, book, isn't it? The, the stories. And within them, we gather the, the meaning for us. Um, I just wanted to tell you first a little bit about Hilda, because she is so important. And um, it's interesting that today, her, her festival day, um, her Remembrance Day falls on the same day as that reading. When we hear about Mother Earth, we hear about Mother Mary, we hear about the Mother of the Kingdom. Um, and Hilda was was such an important person, um, quite an amazing person. She, she was born into a, a royal family in, in um, Northumbria, into the Northumbrian dynasty. Um, and her sister actually became queen of East Anglia um, at some point in her life. And she was um, well educated. She was sent to be educated in um, unusually, perhaps as, as a woman or perhaps not so much as a noble woman, um, but still. And um, she founded and became abbess of, of many, many religious houses. It's, it's quite amazing what a Christian leader she was in France and in England. Um, But she's most known for founding um, the community at Whitby. So if you've ever been to Whitby, that beautiful uh, monastery up on the cliff tops there in in ruins now, sadly, uh, you can still visit it. Um, So that's where she's most um, famous for. Um, because in 664, she hosted a synod for the whole of the Christian world. Uh, and she was the leader and the host. That that um, monastery in Whitby was a dual monastery. It had um, a male monks and it had nuns um, separately, but together. And, and Hilda was the abbess over all of them. So over the men and the women. And she held court and held um, this synod meeting, which is one of the most important synod meetings of Christianity in 664. Um, So all this, you know, um, oppression of women um, is is a more modern thing. Um, And I think I've spoken about the women in the Bible before and how um, we tend to put them down. But if you read the Bible, there were so many women leaders. Um, and women are so so important. But Hilda, the, the conference that she was holding, the Synod, was uh, to decide between the Celtic form of Christianity and the date that they held as um, Easter and the, the Roman Benedictine style of Christianity, the Roman the, we now know as Roman Catholicism, um, and and their date of Easter. We still haven't quite got it right between um, Protestants, Catholics and Orthodox yet, um, but, but this was the beginning. And Hilda lost out. 
uh, she came very much from the Celtic tradition, um, the Northumbrian uh, tradition, uh, Christianity very much in England, came from the north down, um, if this is before Augustine, and uh, we were very Celtic, and, and so there's lots of Celtic roots, and in fact we're using some of the Celtic liturgy in our Sunday mornings and our Tuesday mornings at the moment. Um, she lost out, but she was she gracefully lost and continued her work. Um, and helped to to combine these two forms, um, not forms of Christianity, but perhaps the doctrine of Christianity. Um, and a great way of leading uh, that perhaps, I'll get into trouble now, but perhaps women do better, um, that she managed to combine and peacefully do this and we didn't have a huge reformation and split in the church as we do later on. Um, she she took the arguments of everyone and, and in the end agreed with the others and continued her ministry. An amazing, an amazing woman. So how does that link in with our um, story from Revelation this morning? Well, um, I think just that image of women or, and of the woman, the woman giving the birth pangs, the woman who is Mother Earth, Mother Nature, and the Earth comes to her rescue, the woman that is Mary, the Mother of the Messiah. Um, such strong uh, maternal and female um, influences in our biblical stories, if we only look for them. And of course, that whole story tells the story of um, the devil and Michael and Michael banishing the devil to earth where we now have to cope with him um, and where it is said that if you are Christian you are going to have difficulty because the devil will come after you. Read the screw tape um, letters. We will know that we will come up against it as Christians um, but the, the main theme of this story is that uh, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him, was cast out of heaven. He was also created by God. He was an angel. He is not equivalent to God. We don't have that heaven and hell, that good and evil on equal footing. God is the creator. And he is higher than anything else. And we have nothing to fear from the devil, nothing to fear from evil, as long as we keep ourselves pure and follow Christ. There is nothing to fear. So we, we, uh, we don't have to worry about evil in the world. We just need to be good Christian people. And if the whole world was like that, we would live in the kingdom. It's up to us to keep trying to bring that in. So let's pray. Father God, we pray for all your people on this earth. We pray particularly for those who are suffering, who the devil is tempting, who the devil is fighting, in all those places where it is so difficult to be a Christian. We pray for all of those places that we think about in the world where there is conflict and war. Remembering particularly this week our Armenian brothers and sisters in Christ uh, and those fleeing from that part of Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, which is to be taken over and by Azerbaijan, all those who are left homeless, who have had to leave their possessions. And we pray for those all around the world for, where, for whom this is happening. So many places in the world where Christians are being persecuted at this moment. And Lord, we pray for all of those places where all your people suffer for whatever religion they are, that they were made in your image, and loved by you. Father God, we think of all of those who are suffering from this pandemic. 
as we watch the number rise in our own country. We pray for all of those in hospital, for all of those families who have lost loved ones, for all those affected economically by this pandemic, and for all those affected socially by this pandemic. We pray that they may know you and find comfort in your arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we think of St. Hilda this morning, we think of your church in this place and we pray for a unity in our churches. We pray for all of those who worship at home now. We pray for those church buildings that they will again one day be full. And we pray for all who minister, particularly thinking of our own diocese, our bishops, Tim, David and Debbie. Lord, we pray that you would uphold us as Christians in our homes and keep our faith strong and keep us working towards your kingdom. And Lord, we pray for those around in our community. We pray particularly for our schools in our areas, for teachers and staff and for the families. And we pray for any hurting and grieving in our communities, lifting to you now particularly those we hold in our own hearts and minds. We pray particularly today for the family of Iva, whose funeral took place yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Eternal God, who made the abbess Hilda to shine like a jewel in our land and through her holiness and leadership, blessed your church with new life and unity. Help us, like her, to yearn for the gospel of Christ and to reconcile those who are divided. Through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray in confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us, joining me this morning. Lovely to see you all. Bless you. Have a good week and see you at the weekend. Bless you.